Hi, and welcome to the Student Council, an educational advice podcast made for and by students. Everyone is the most qualified to talk about their own experiences. As always, I am Carter Dvorak, and we're joined by Dylan Black of Northeastern today. Welcome, Dylan. Hey, how's it going? What's up? It's good. How are you? Good, good. It's been a, been a long week. <laughs> yeah, it, it is Monday. Um, it, <laughs> but it's been, it's been a long Monday, a long President's Day. Long President's Day. Um, well, I guess kicking off Monday, this could be within any time in the last week, kind of as an intro question. Do you have maybe like a favorite five minutes of this last long week and or Monday? Uh, um, I mean, it, it might not be five minutes, but I know um, two days ago, two or three days ago, like me and like five or six of my friends went to this uh, like burger place nearby and just had a good time, especially because last week, everyone in like all of our friend group was just like pounded down by work and like you know uh, my friend had like three midterms in like one day it was it was ridiculous we were all like suffering <laughs> and so uh, sort of to take that night off and just like chill was definitely a good maybe not a good five minutes but a good a good time so, absolutely yeah it is midterms isn't it yeah it's it's coming up I, it was an early midterm because i think the class for my friend in particular like gives like three or four midterms mm -hmm. um but yeah like i have i have my first midterm for a class in three or four days um i have a paper coming up up next week i got it's it's moving which is which is weird because it feels like the semester just started yeah i the, the benefits of trimester is i mean i i have exams in like two weeks too but yeah it's moving good luck on everything there <laughs> um certainly so i've a bit of questions kind of talk to you so i met you through fiveable i met you through yep. the ap chem cram session was the uh <laughs> first time I ever saw who you were and I do want to admit the like it was five of us I think in AP Chem who like watched the session we were in the little AP Chem discord we flipped like the whole time watching you it was an immediate like fiveable obsession from that day <laughs> um like we were all like we're gonna work there we're gonna do it um like it was like if you if you were selling us any level of MLM, we would have been like in with our wallet. Oh man! So I gotta start. I gotta start the fight. Yeah. Um. So to everyone listening, if you recruit your friend, no, okay. <laughs> yeah. Every, we have a special deal as part of this podcast. <laughs> now we're saving that for yeah, the just, ad just, break. Just just don't don't tell the don't tell the rest of Five Bull. They they yeah. <laughs> this is just between us. us <laughs> exactly. You, me, back. Anybody five else minutes in, out there? Five minutes in. There's already a back alley deal. Nice. <laughs> nice. But um, talk me through how you started with Five Bull. You were one of the earliest employees employees if I'm not mistaken so how did that journey go how is it going what are you up yeah, to with that um so I I first met Amanda who's the CEO of Fiveable my for my freshman year of high school for context I'm a freshman in college now um and so I met her my freshman year of high school I was taking AP World and I was hanging out a lot in the the AP students discord specifically in the AP World channel um and and I was talking a lot helping some people out um and one day Amanda pops in and, and she hadn't started Fiveable yet but she was a, an AP World teacher and was like hey you know feel free to ask me any questions I'm here for y'all um, and I remember one of my first interactions with her was me asking her for help on a short answer question and her like just ripping my answers to shreds uh, it like I think I I was like I was like oh yeah I'm gonna impress her get her like a three out of three she's like yeah this is like a one out of three maybe um, so it was a it was a fun time but then um, she reaches out to me one day and is like hey I see you're really active on the AP World Discord um, you know would you like to be an affiliate for this high level history course I'm, I'm selling and she was selling like resources and stuff and so it was my job to like go and, and help her sell them and stuff like that um, not in MLM way. Like I was, it was, it was not, cause I know, I know how it sounds whenever I tell people that, but then, um, eventually sometime in like, I think, I think it was April 6th was the exact day Fiveable started, um, of 20, 2018. Um, she started Fiveable, um, and, and I was a student, I, I knew her and I talked to her about some stuff, but, um, but I, I was more so a student, you know, I watched the streams. I, um, I participated in them. I, I kept doing my work and stuff. Um, and then over the summer, um, the college board announced that it was cutting out like half of the AP world curriculum. And I started a, a petition to, to end it. Um, and Amanda was also really active in that scene of, of helping them stop it. And so we worked together on that. Um, and around the end of the summer, she was like, Hey, you know, five bulls taken off. Would you want to intern for me? And so I took that. I interned for pretty much up until like June of 2020. Um, so for like two years. And then I, um, no, up until, excuse me, I was an intern until June of 2021. Um, and then I started working part-time for them as like an official employee. Um, I've, I've done a lot in there. I've worked on content. I've worked on, on engineering. I've done a little bit of marketing stuff here and there, a little bit of like SEO work. So I've, I've, I've been around there for a while, been around the block, but it's been, nice. it's been a great experience. Um, and, and it's still going great. So awesome. Yeah. That's absolutely incredible. I didn't, so the petition to like fight the AP World Cut is that where that video of Amanda came from? Where yes. she was, I was because yeah. I remember that was the first thing I ever knew 
when yeah. I started interning with Five of Bulls, they sent me that video and they're like, watch this. And I was like, this is the, this is the greatest. Like, I'm yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. So, awesome. Yeah, no, it was um, that video. So I started the petition and she went to the, the reading, like the official, you know, uh, AP world reading. And at it, Trevor Packer, the senior VP of AP at College Board, gives this like Q&A session over like, ask me questions about what's happening because they had just announced the changes. Like, they announced the changes, I think like a week or two after the exam. Um, and she went and she goes up to the mic and, you know, she does her whole thing. If you look it up on YouTube, I'm sure you can find it. Cause it got, it got like 10 or 20,000 views. Mm -hmm. Um, so she blew up for that, but yeah, that's where that video comes from. Incredible. I will link that below. Cause it is, it's a cool video, but, yeah. uh, yeah, I do have a question. What prompted you to take AP world as a freshman? <laughs> like um, ego. No, I'm kidding. Um, no. So I, so my high school had a thing called the AP Academy. It was basically like an honors program. Um, and so in eighth grade, you like handed in like your GPA. If that was a thing in middle school, you know, you took it like a placement test. And if you got in, um, you were in this, like, you, you basically just graduated with like a distinction um, if you did all the stuff. And part of it was you had to take an AP class your freshman year. And the only AP class they offered a freshman was AP world. Um, and so you took that and it was like, they, they very clearly knew what they designed it for freshmen. So like it was aligned with your English class. Like it was a very like clear like thing. Like you were the only freshman who took AP world were people in this like honors program. Um, the only people who took AP world, actually, it wasn't even available for anyone else. Um, they recently got rid of that program and replaced it with kind of a more inclusive, like AP for all program, which I'm all for. Um, but that, that's why I took AP world. It actually wasn't, it, it wasn't by my own volition, which is really funny nowadays, considering I, I love the course. Um, and I, I'm now a history major. Um, and so I, um, it, it's just very funny saying that like, oh yeah, I kind of landed there by accident. And now it kind of shaped, it really did shape my entire high school career. So, so props to AP world. Props to AP world. Props to AP chem for me. That was AP chem. It was like, I took that class and it, because I took that class, I took your live stream. And because I took your live stream, I interned at Fiveable. And like, yeah, that got, that started this podcast initially with other founding members. It started my other podcast with other founding members. Like <laughs> that was AP chem for me. Like, did I degrade on the test? No, but the point of AP chem, it was not their chemical reactions. It was the friends we made along the way. Exactly. So. That's, that's the point of APs. It's not about the scores or the college credit. It's about, it's all about the, the real AP were the friends we made along the way. Like you said, really was also you've worked at college board. You've interned with them. I remember the well, day. I just saw you on their video and I was like, <laughs> yo, like that's, that's the, the yeah. guy. Um, and like, I had that, uh, that scene from the Reed's recent Tarantino movie that I don't remember, uh, the Hollywood one where he's like pointing at the TV. That was, oh, me. Yeah, 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 that I, meme. <laughs> so, um, I actually didn't intern for college board. I was part of, it, it, it's a weird thing. I was part of their like youth advisory council, okay. which was basically a group of a hundred students who they went with, went to with like surveys. We had like monthly or biweekly like meetings about like certain topics. Uh, we got to work on some, some bigger projects. Uh, basically anytime the college board needed a student opinion on something, they'd go to us. Um, so it was 100 people. Um, I started there my sophomore year um, as just like a regular founding member. And then eventually my junior year, I was like a, a student found like a, what do they call it? Like a student advisor leader sort of thing. So they gave me some more responsibilities, had me more managing some stuff. Um, so it was cool. It really wasn't that big a gig. It was like maybe two or three hours a week. It wasn't anything huge, um, but it was, it was a really cool opportunity, especially um, it's run through do something, which I think is some like social justice platform. I'm not actually really sure what it is, but it was, it was a really cool opportunity. I got to meet some cool people. Um, and, and like you said, I got to be in one of the college boards, like welcome to AP videos, which was a really cool experience. Um, they, it's really funny. They actually, um, they, they mailed me like an iPhone uh, to film it on, like to, because they wanted everyone to have the same camera quality. And I'm sitting there being like, oh, like, do we get to keep this iPhone? <laughs> Uh, obviously not because then I saw the the return label but uh, they sent us that they sent us like a mic pack and it was it was like a very cool kind of official official deal um, it, it was funny actually my my AP world teacher saw it a couple we, a couple of months ago like at the beginning of this school year and I guess she hadn't seen it last year because uh, of COVID or whatever but she sends me a picture of it and was like what is this how did you get on this <laughs> like she was like I was hollering your name and it was like <laughs> I was cracking because I was like because I'm sitting here and she was like, yeah, you look so young. And I'm like, yeah, that was me like two years ago. <laughs> yeah. So it was, a good, it was a good opportunity. Absolutely. How did like, did you just like, like, how did, did you see that they were offering it and you signed up for it? Did they like recruit you? Was it like a secret college board dude in the fedora <laughs> and a trench coat that knocked on your window one night? <laughs> yeah. So actually, so Trevor Packer comes to your house. No. Um, so the, the way it worked was um, the way I found out about it was I was in, in, I was talking to Trevor Packer about the AP world petition stuff. He reached out to me and my petition partner, Paige, um, 
um, and we had a conversation with him on the phone about about the changes they were making to the changes, um, which now is AP Modern in AP Ancient, which hopefully it comes someday soon. Um, but so he reached out to us, and I emailed him one day. I was like, "Hey, like, does does the College Board have some sort of student initiative?" Because I was like, "If it doesn't, like, I'd love to work on on making that because I think that'd be great." And he was like, "Oh yeah, no, you're not the first person. This exists." Um, and he was like, "And they're accepting applications." And so um, I sent an application. They had like you know your standard application. I think there was like a 250 word essay that was like, "How do you want to change the world?" or something like very very like you know that. But um, yeah, and I got in. I think I think some like 900 kids applied and like 100 got in. So it's 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 not the not the highest acceptance rate. But I I will say now also for anyone listening, uh, it has since been dissolved. So there it's not going to happen again. Um, so for anyone who's about to start like scouring the internet for the application, it's, unfortunately it's it's no longer a thing. Dang, that's cool. You talked to Trevor though. Yeah, no, that was that was a fun opportunity. He he's. As, as much as people like to shit on Trevor Packer, he, he was a nice guy when I talked to him, which I at least appreciated that he, I, I really did appreciate that he took the time to talk to us, this, like two students who had been working on this. Um, so it was it was a really good good time talking to him. Um, I, I haven't talked to him since. I don't even know if he remembers my name. Um, but I, I do distinctly remember watching, um, I watched the live stream of the Q&A he did. And he mentioned, this was right around the time the petition was at like 5,000 signatures or so. Um, and for context, it peaked around 13,000. Um, he, he mentions that he goes, oh yeah, I've been tracking the online petition and it's got 5,000 signatures. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, oh no. I'm like, he knows exactly what we're doing. <laughs> oh no. That's the moment I realized that that had gone from like a stupid thing that was like, haha, you know, we don't like this to like, damn, they're noticing this. Um, yeah, no, so it was, it, he, he was nice. Uh, you know, I got my issues with the college board, but I will say that was a very nice conversation. Well, that's great. That's awesome. Shifting gears a decent amount. You said, so you're majoring in history, you're going to Northeastern. And before I get into your major, which you do want to talk about, what drew you to Northeastern and just like, how did your college process go? And just kind of some of the pieces around that, was that like an early choice? Did you find it out later? Like kind of talk to the story through that one. Yeah. So, um, so I first found out about Northeastern when I was a freshman in high school. Um, one of my classmates in an engineering class I was taking got in and, and ended up committing here. And so she announced it to the class and I was like, oh, there's a Northeastern university. Okay. I had only heard of Northwestern. Um, so I did some Googling and I looked into it um, and I, it seemed to be a good school. So it was on my radar for like the better part of high school. And, and I always knew I wanted to go to Boston, if not stay in state. Cause it was just, it's, it's one of my favorite cities in the United States. And I still, I love it here. Um, but so my, the summer before my junior year, um, I took a week and I, I took a vacation to Boston and I toured a bunch of schools. So I toured Harvard, MIT, BU, Northeastern and Tufts. Um, and so I, I go to these schools and I go to Northeastern and I'm walking around looking at this place. And I'm like, I love this campus. I love this place. I, Cause it's the, the campus here, especially is something that drew me to it. Cause it's, you know, if you think about BU for anyone who, who isn't familiar, it's basically a street right? Like it's, it's a bunch of buildings on Commonwealth Avenue and, and that's cool, but it was like, it's not really a campus. Um, Northeastern has a, a campus proper. We have like quads and, and a real like zone that's Northeastern, which I love, but it's still situated directly in, in the city. It's like a 10 minute walk from Fenway. Um, but so that happened. I took this tour and then uh, my senior year rolls around and I applied to five schools. I applied to Northeastern, obviously, Tufts, Brandeis, Rutgers University, and Stevens Institute of Technology. Um, so just those five, I got into all of them except for Tufts, which is why to this day I have a grudge against Tufts. Um, but so I got into it. And at the end of the day, uh, Rutgers and Stevens gave me such you know, kind of terrible financial aid. They were out of the picture. It was actually, I think Northeastern was like a thousand dollars more expensive a year than Rutgers. Like it was not to the point where it was, you know, um, the, the, the benefits of being here outweighed the additional like marginal cost. So I knew it came down at the end of the day to Northeastern and Brandeis. Um, and it was basically Brandeis. I had gotten in, uh, in a humanities fellowship. I'd gotten like one of their highest scholarships. I like, they were basically like, you will be here for humanities. And, and I was like, that's awesome but I was way too scared about going full force humanities at the time that I was like, I want the, the co-op opportunities, the career opportunities that Northeastern has. Um, and so the, the, the um, kind of the last draw was my family during spring break of, of, I guess it was 2021. Yeah. It was last year coming up on a year from now, a year ago. Uh, we took a trip up to Boston. We took a trip. My brother had gotten into a few other new England schools. He's now at URI, uh, the university of Rhode Island, but he had gotten into URI uh, Westchester, which is Pennsylvania. He'd gotten into I think university of like Hartford. Yeah. University of Hartford. Um, so we just, kind of took a road trip up and hit a bunch of those schools and stayed in Somerville, which is a town kind of adjacent to Boston. Um, and we looked at Brandeis and Northeastern, you know, it was, it was peak COVID. So we were uh, not allowed to go into any buildings. It was all self-guided tours. It was, um, but we go to Brandeis and my mom had been like all gung-ho Brandeis for, for the better part of my college application process. And I actually, fun fact, almost applied their ED. 
Um, but so we're, we're driving around this campus and my mom just like hates the campus. She thinks it's the worst, like, but, but she still was like, because so the, the history of Northeastern, this might be a little bit of a tangent, but Northeastern was not always kind of like the, the upstanding university is today. It was, it was, you know, to my mom, when she was growing up, it was very much like a commuter school, a, you know, kind of a middle of the road, if not slightly lower school. Um, so, so to her, when she's, when she found out that I had gotten in Northeastern, and was super enthusiastic. She was kind of like, she didn't know. So she was like, Oh, well, why? Like, you know, it's kind of this like middle of nowhere, like no one knows school. And we go to the, go to Northeastern. My mom's still kind of gung ho Brandeis, but it definitely been knocked out a few points. Um, and we're walking around and I'm like, Oh, there's like this building, this building. I've done my research. Um, and we're talking about like co-ops and stuff. We're walking around and, um, my mom sees this campus and she's like, Oh yeah, no, you're going here. <laughs> and so, and I was actually team Northeastern, um, more again, more so because I was, I was insecure in major in full humanities. I'd gotten into Brandeis for a double major in history and American studies with a minor in history of ideas. So there was there was no no STEM in there at all. Um, no, no business, no like it was definitely a very treacherous career path. Um, so that's why I was more leaning Northeastern at the end of it. Like that night, I think I put in the deposit to commit to Northeastern. It was like a very made that decision committed and and I had been agonizing over this decision. So it was a very like relieving moment because I the second I committed, my mind moved from like comparing these two schools to just like, oh my God, look at all this awesome stuff Northeastern has to offer. And I started getting really excited. Um, and I, I really do love it here. I have I, I have really, I made the right choice. And even the humanities programs here, even though it's known traditionally as kind of a STEMI school, a business school, an engineering school, the humanities programs here are are fantastic. I mean, I cannot, I've only been here for two semesters, we're really one and a half, but but every history professor I've had, every you know, professor I've talked to, especially in the history department, they're they're incredible. Um, they're, they're really incredible. So I, I made the right choice. Incredible. That is absolutely awesome. It's fun to like, in the midst of the college decision myself and kind of with my peers, I'm like, it's really interesting to yeah. hear like those final decision processes. I'm still waiting on some, on some announcements, Good but luck. yeah, thank you. Um, but it's cool to like, just hear what drew everybody to the colleges that they're at. It's, I think it's just such a fascinating thing to, to hear about. And that seems like such a cool story with with Northeastern. And like, yeah. so you talk about you're going to history and then you also minored in economics, right? I, um, so it's funny you mentioned that. Yeah. Um, so I just switched my major. Oh, um, wow. Okay. I, I, well, it's funny. I got into Northeastern as a computer science design major, combined major, um, very quickly switched that to computer science and history, which is a combined major program they have here. And then just this last semester, my original plan was comp sci history double and a minor in econ. Because um, I had credit from macro and micro, it would be like three extra courses. And I, I started this computer science degree and I enjoyed it enough. It was good enough, but I was like, I just, I could not see myself taking computer science classes for all four years of college. It was not something I wanted to do. And so I decided recently to switch to a combined in comp, uh, not comp sci, um, in history and economics with a minor in computer science because I'm, I'm a year in. So, um, but so it's, it's funny that you mentioned minor in economics because I just switched that around. Um, well, very cool. That's fun to, uh, we get the, the immediate scoop then. So <laughs> exactly, so, not even officially yet. Yeah. Wow. It's not, I, I saw it was not a new LinkedIn when I last looked through, um, <laughs> we go deep on this podcast when it comes to research. So, um, yeah, so that's really interesting. So like, is there crossover between those topics was the first thing I thought of. And just like, kind of what are your experiences with each of them? Uh, between comp sci and history or history yeah. and econ? Honestly, all three or like, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, obviously I think the, the most, the more clear overlap is with history and econ, you know, you can obviously think economic history and, and, you know, thinking about economics of different like empires and different civilizations and stuff. Um, but in terms of comp sci history, which is, that's the, that's the question I get most often when I tell people, I used to tell people what my major was it, the, the joke I'd always tell is that I'm a history major. Who's also a sellout. Um, cause, cause the, the main motivation behind me having that comp sci degree was for, for employability. I'll be honest, but um, the field of digital humanities is an incredible field, you know, um, especially when it comes to data, combining data with, um, with an information with history, the digital, digital history is a really growing field. Um, you know, someone came into one of my classes the other day and did a presentation on how they put together a bunch of data visualizations around Boston. Um, and you can look at like, you know, there are digital archives and digital projects that are happening. Um, it's, it's really an incredible field in the inner lab. People don't realize, but it's really there. Um, to have digital skills, even in the humanities, is super important. Um, and so that's kind of where my overlap was that I was like, oh, even if I decide to follow history, I can always go into digital humanities and I have that skill set. Um, you know, if, if, and if, if you're someone listening who is very hesitant to like major in, in a humanity because they don't feel it's as employable, double it up with a STEM. Like, it, and if you decide to follow that path, the digital, the digital skills, no matter what your field is, and I know this just from a semester of history, will make your life and your career that much more fruitful. 
um, yeah, it's it's a really incredible field that I, I haven't had enough exposure to, but I, I know of some projects that are happening at Northeastern that are really, really awesome with digital humanities. Awesome. That's incredibly cool. I am curious, like, a little bit about Northeastern. Like, what is some of the, I guess, some of the campus life like as well? Like, what is kind of the, you talked about, you know, going to burger places and also, like, being stressed about kind of midterms and stuff, <laughs> but, like, kind of what is, I guess, some of the general campus vibes, some of the, like, common activities and, like, traditions or anything with, like, the university itself? Yeah, um, I, it's a great question. So the, the, the main thing I want to emphasize is this is a super supportive campus. Like I know I mentioned being stressed at midterms, um, you know, it's, and the joke is like, oh, we're all kind of struggle buddies, but no, it, it is an incredibly um, supportive campus. Everyone is, is here for each other. The professors are always here for you. Office hours are great. Um, in terms of social life on campus, it's, it's incredible. I mean, if you're someone here coming here looking for like a crazy party life, you're probably not going to find it. Um, you know, that's, you'll, you'll be able to find it, but it won't be Northeastern parties. You'll be, you'll be hanging out with like the MIT frats or some of the house parties in Mission Hill. Um, the, 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 the party culture here is not, not super poignant, um, which is fine by me. I'm not a party person, but the social life, like making friends, meeting people, out of this world. I mean, you you will meet so many people in your classes, but also, I mean, there are like 500 clubs here. You know, I'm in the the history club. The I'm joining the film club. I joined the quiz bowl team, trivia club. Uh, yeah, <laughs> carted in a little. My first exposure, my first exposure to quiz bowl ever. Very humbling. Uh, but so, uh, you know, there's uh, I'm I'm joining the halal. If you're interested in religious life, I can definitely speak a little bit more to that. Um, it's it's an incredibly supportive and, and amazing community. And I mean, you're you're in Boston, right? So like, even if you don't necessarily meet too many people. At, at your school. I mean, you are literal steps from BU. Uh, you're, I mean, I've walked to MIT, even though some, you know, to cross the river, you can take a train up to Harvard. Um, you know, you've got Suffolk and Civ uh, Simmons and um, what are they called? Berkeley School of Music and New England Conservatory. And um, I mean, there's so many, I can't name them all. Tufts is right there. So it's like, it's, it's a college city. Um, so you will, you will find people. Um, I can, I can guarantee you that. Like I'll, I'll put my money on that, that everyone who comes here will find some friends. They'll find, I didn't think I would. And now I, I have, I'm in a group with like, you know, 10 or so people and we're all hanging out every night. And it's, it's an, it's an incredible community. Um, in terms of traditions, um, the, the one big tradition that I've, I've taken part in is the bean pot, which is a big, it's a, it's a hockey tournament that happens between Northeastern BU, um, Harvard and BC. Right, so it's you have uh, two semifinal games and then a final game and a cons uh, consolation game, and and we we came second this year. Um, you know, I still hold that grudge against BU, but um, you know, we we it's I, I went to the finals this year and it's held at the TD Garden where the Bruins and the Celtics play. Um, it's you know this huge hockey game, and the cool part is you know at most most sports games it's the home team that's cheering. Right, it's you know you go to a Red Sox game, it's mostly Red Sox fans. You go to a Celtics game, it's mostly Celtics fans. Here, it's it's 50-50 BU Northeastern. So we're hurling insults at each other, like hurling. I mean, the the amount of I mean, I, I went with a sign that like in big uh, big letters said Strip Mall Campus because you know like I said it's kind of one street. Uh, no, we went we went wild on them, and and even though we lost the game, I still contend our our crowd won. And if if anyone here is listening. And you're a BU student. Sucks to be you. Um, so, <laughs> so um, actually, fun fact: Amanda, the CEO of Five, went to BU. So, um, please keep my job. <laughs> but yeah, um, I mean, there's also there's like a, there's Fall Fest that happens every year. It's a big like club fair. Um, I don't know about many spring traditions since this is my first spring here. Um, and plus this is the first spring kind of post, 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 big, big quotation marks there, post quote, uh, post COVID where things are starting to get back to normal. So, so I don't really know. I mean, but uh, the, the, the campus life is great. There are like a bunch of, there are events all the time. And especially, I mean, the, the departments at the university hold some really awesome events in terms of um, like lecturers and speakers. So if you're interested in like branching out and going to like lectures, I mean, just yesterday, I'm a, I'm a history economics student. I was at a philosophy lecture. I have next week, a couple of history events coming up like it's you you will find stuff to do it's 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 very rare that I find someone who's like, there's nothing to do on campus or nothing to do around here. Awesome. That's really cool to hear. Like, I feel like a part of this podcast, I think part of it's a little bit selfishly, like me on my own college search and like trying to decide between <laughs> schools. But part did, you, of did you apply to Northeastern? I did not, unfortunately. I uh, I didn't know about it in All right, time. well, goodbye. Uh, oh, <laughs> he left the call. No, yeah, um, no, unfortunately, I applied to Northwestern. I don't know. Is that a rivalry? I feel well, like... I I don't know if it's a rivalry. I do know there's a general consensus from what I've heard of people who here who hate the interaction of, oh, where do you go to school? Oh, I go to Northeastern. Oh, do you, uh, that's in Chicago, right? And you're like, oh, no, that's Northwestern. And they're like, oh, what's Northeastern? Because um, Northwestern is, is definitely a more well-known school. Uh, and it's a higher rank. So, so 
you know, um, no, no hate to Northwestern, love Northwestern. I, I know some people there, but um, yeah, it's, it's a really, um, I don't think it's a really big rivalry, but it is a, a notable distinction. Definitely. But like, I think something that I just, I found I really valued a lot is like just student perspectives, right? If I know, you know, friends who had gone off to other colleges, so, like talking to them. And I love just hearing about all the different pieces and like uniquenesses of campus life and, and kind of the fun little things like this hockey game sounds incredible. And like, I want to go see if I can Google some stuff on YouTube. Maybe I can find some crowd some crowd footage maybe i can see yeah, i'll, I'll send sign. you some crowd footage i got so many videos <laughs> absolutely i'll put it on the instagram um <laughs> certainly if if that's cool but yeah yeah I love that. I just think it's so cool. Like college is such a weird and fascinating thing that I just am like all really interested because I kind of have to be right now. But yeah. yeah. So like shifting a little bit on like more about, you know, just kind of college tips and tricks. We have a little uh, hope to be reoccurring segment on the show called Pass It On, which is like, is there a piece of it could also be high school or college advice that like mm-hmm. somebody maybe told you at some point that you want to share now or like would be would maybe pass it on to the listeners or whatever. Keep the be advice chain going. <laughs> yeah, um, I think I think one thing that I, I'm glad to see it starting to level down now that colleges aren't accepting them as much or, or using them as much. Um, standardized tests have always been something where I'm like, anytime someone's super stressed about it, I go up to them and I'm like, you know that once you get to college, it doesn't matter if you got a, a what's the lowest, like a 400 or a 1600 on the SAT or, a, or like a 12 or a, a 36 in the ACT. Like, you know, obvi- obviously those tests matter. You know, if you get a 400 on the SAT, good luck getting it at Harvard. But um, I know some people who will stress over like, a 10 point difference. And I'm like, you know, I, I, I was looking through some old texts and I found that I texted someone about AP tests in particular. I was like, you know, they, they were worried that if they got like a, a three on their test, people would think they're stupid. And I'm like, imagine going to college, you know, meeting someone for the first time and you're like, oh, hey, you know, what are you like? And they go, oh, well, I got a five on AP World and a four on AP Lit and a three on AP, you know, and you're like, okay, but but but, but who are you? And, I'm, and they're like, oh, well, I got a four on, on A push. So, you know, it doesn't matter. The the only thing that matters for AP tests in particular is, is college credit. And even that, you know, it, it, of course it matters. It's important. But but I think students tend to see these advanced classes or these high scores as a symbol of prestige, which, you know, I don't want to invalidate if you worked hard. It's an incredible achievement to take 18 AP classes or to, you know, or to um, get a 1600 of the SAT. But if you're not someone who's gotten a 1600 of the SAT, it's it's not the end of the world. It is not going to make or break your life. And I, I think also with college, prestige doesn't matter. I mean, it's it's so many people... Are, are, you know, this might be a, a, a crass term, but so many people are prestige whores when it comes to the college admissions process. Like I, you know, a little story of mine, I was going to apply to Harvard um, when I got here, just more so because I was like, you know, it's in the Boston area, it's Harvard, um, you know, do it for shits and giggles. And I, I get to the essay that's like, the, the Harvard application actually doesn't have a required supplemental. It, does, it has one, but it's the like supplemental is not required. Um, and so, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm like, well, what am I going to write? And I was on the verge of submitting my application, just submitting like a 20 page research paper I wrote for AP research. And I was like, and I was like, it wasn't my first pick even. I was like, why am I applying here? And I was, I realized I'm just applying there because I I liked the idea of, oh, I got into Harvard or I applied to Harvard or, so I didn't apply. Um, You know, don't, don't just apply somewhere because it's a prestigious school. Uh, you know, the, the prestigious schools have a lot to offer for sure, but um, don't apply to Yale so you can be a Yale. Apply to Yale because you want to go to Yale because blank, you know. Um, it doesn't, like, I know so many people who make jokes being like, you know, if I get a 1200 the SAT, I'm going to have to go to community college. And I'm like, okay, so like, or like, you know, or people who, who maybe like passive aggressively put down other people who, um, who go to a state school, you know, or like, don't go to, you know, a big name school. And I'm like, but, but why, you know, why, why would you put someone down for that? Cause it, it, in reality, we're moving towards a future where a lot of careers, you don't need a degree, or at least the degree is not vital. Um, and so someone who who goes to a school that isn't as rigorous and isn't as huge, but spends their time networking and spends their time working on projects and stuff versus someone who went to Harvard, you know, that it's going to be completely different. So it's, yeah, that that's, I, I guess I went on a little bit of a tangent there, but it's just, I get very angry when I hear people being like, well, I'm applying to 17 colleges and all of them are T20s. And I'm like, why? Like, like, just like, why, why would you do that to yourself? You can't want to go to all these schools equally, like, or, or the people who like, they, they don't get into a school and they immediately turn and start, start crapping on the schools. They're like, oh, well, well, it's a bad school. This happened with Northeastern really heavily this, this time around where it was, um, they, they had over-enrolled my class. And so they're under-enrolled the other class and so the acceptance rates are ridiculous they're ridiculously low but people went from like worshiping northeastern in our co-op program stuff to being like it's a horrible school that's gaming the rankings and i'm like yeah but you applied here for a reason like don't don't flip on it um you know and it, it has its issues but i think when people start claiming that they were like yield protected from a t50 i'm like come on get over yourself you know 
it's not all it's cracked up to be. College is four years of your life. You can learn outside of college. It's yeah. I I think people should just like loosen up about it. I I think maybe I'm I'm being a little crass because I'm here now. But like, I mean, I I had spent my junior year stressing about the college admissions process. I was planning on applying to like ten schools. I was one of those people. I applied to five schools. It, I was done with the college admissions process by November. Like, you know, three of my schools didn't require supplementals. I think Brandeis and Tufts were my only supplemental. And even then, they only had one or two. So it was like, and, and I remember feeling really guilty. Actually, I was sitting in my room, and everyone's freaking out. And I'm like, I'm I'm kind of done. Like, I'm I'm and and maybe that was just being me proactive. But I was like, I, I felt guilty because I had finished my college application because I was like, I should be applying to fifteen schools, and I didn't apply or whatever. And then I realized I'm like, who cares? Like you applied to the schools you wanted to go to. The other ones you realized you didn't have a reason to go to. You know, same thing happened with UPenn where my mom really wanted me to go there. And I was like, I don't have a reason to apply here. Uh, so it's, 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 you know, I'm not, I'm not saying this to put down the IVs or the T20s because they're incredible schools. And if you get in there, you should be incredibly proud of yourself because you are incredibly talented. But for, for people who are, are feeling down because they're not, don't, you know, you're, you're just as talented and just as capable as, as any, you know, average Harvard person. Plus Harvard came in f- third or fourth in the bean pot. Like, no. <laughs> yeah, I- I'm with that. I think that's a really, it's a really great tip, I think, and, and something that gets kind of thrown around, I think, in the college process of like, yeah, go to the schools that you really want to. Like, I've seen that. I, I was somebody who was in the crowd of like, I did do, I did the, I did the, uh, I applied to Harvard just for the, for the giggles kind of thing. But like, I think I, like, I had another friend and I who like, we did the Harvard thing together just as like a, we're just going to do this and see. And like, I don't care what I, what I really get on that, on that decision. You know, maybe I'll go tour Harvard and be like, okay, this is actually the place to be, but being much more attracted to that allure than I am as somebody applying to college. Yeah, no, it, it, you definitely, I think as, as high school goes on, you definitely become a little bit like, what's the word? Like disenchanted with the whole like, um, what is it? Hipsum, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Stanford, MIT, like kind of that like cult of people, like cult of personality. Um, you know, and again, this isn't to put down anyone who who no. applies to these schools. They're, they're great schools. Um, or like you said, like you kind of apply there, but it's like, oh, let's see what happens. But, but it's the people who apply to like, all of the IVs and they're like, I, and then they're, st- they stake their like reputation on this. And I'm like, why you don't even, I, like, I, I've gone up to some people and been like, why do you want to go to Harvard? And they're like, Oh, cause it's a great school. I'm like, of course it's a great school, but like, but why? And they're like, it's Harvard. I don't need a why. I'm like, you need a why. If you cannot in, in, I mean, that's why the why blank essay is so important for schools because the, the, you know, the whole idea of why blank is because the school usually knows it's a good school. If it's a good, school. you know, it, Harvard does not need to be told, I want to go to Harvard because it's a great school. They know they, you know, they want to hear what are you going to contribute to their campus? What are you going to be at Harvard specifically or at MIT specifically or at Northeastern specifically or Tufts or whatever? Um, you know, I, I, the, the one why why us essay I wrote was to Tufts actually. So I guess this isn't the best example considering I got denied, but um, I, I wrote it on this Canon that like sits on the Tufts campus, the students repaint over and over, you know, and, and that's not to pat myself on the back, but I think like I use it as an example because it's not just, I want to go to Tufts because Tufts is cool. It's like, this is a thing about Tufts that I love. And I, I use it as more of a, you know, a broad allegory or metaphor, but um, you know, it's, I, I, I think that a lot of people apply to, to prestigious schools for the prestige. And and that's that shouldn't be your driving factor unless you're just applying for the sake of, like you said, just like, huh, let's see. But but even then I'm like, don't, if, if you are not, if you would not go to that school if you got in, but let's say, you know, if you only got into Harvard, like Carter, you know, mm-hmm. you, you'd be fine going there, right? You'd yeah, be happy to yeah. go there. That was that my thing with 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 Harvard was like if I got into only Harvard I would be pretty upset mm-hmm. like I would be like I, I of course I'm happy to go to Harvard but you know Harvard but um, right the but, social network but, Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> name name Zuckerberg Mark Zuckerberg uh, robot not human but I was um, at the cleaners yeah <laughs> no but so um, you know I was like but but I really love Northeaster. And so I, you know, that, that's kind of my question of like, my, my criteria for applying to a school was if I got into the school and it was the only school I could go to, would I have many reservations? And if the answer is I would have mo- like many, many, many reservations, you may not want to apply there. Yeah, I think that's great. And like I, the why the essay that you said is such a powerful thing because that was me saying, I kind of did a similar thing for Brown as well, where I'm like, it's a big name. And then I actually started to research it and like their open curriculum. And I'm like, this is fascinating. And I think I would really like it. And then that kind of like in doing the why essay, I went from being like kind of another just like giggles essay to like, oh, this might actually be a really vi- like viable place and it could be a really interesting experience. So like, yeah, I think the why essay is a really important thing to write and to like have and do so. I think I'm glad colleges have it as much as like, man, if I, if November me or like <laughs> December me hearing this would be so angry, but uh, 
February me is like, yeah, the YSAs are great. They're an important piece of the application process. I'm yeah, like, they're, now they're, they're I all mean, done. I was gonna, I was gonna say, you know, looking at this retrospectively, where where I don't have to write any more YSAs, at least until I'm applying to grad school. Uh, but um, you know, I. Uh, you look at it a completely different perspective because when you're looking at it pre or during college admissions, you're like, why should I have to sell myself to the schools? And you see all my stats, you see all that, you know, I'm already writing my common app essay, whatever. But then you get past it and you're like, and you're a college student, you know, or you're done with it. And you're like, and you start really, you know, something I did after I had committed, I really started retrospectively thinking about high school because I was like, I'm for all intents and purposes, I had, you know, three more months of high school left, but I was like, I'm done. Like senioritis hit. I, um, you know, I'd gotten into college. I was maintaining my grades. It, it was, it was over. And so um, I, I started really thinking about, you know, what would I have done differently? And, and a big part of that was like, I spent way too much time concerned with like prestige and, and then like numbers. And I was like, I did not spend enough time like enjoying myself, um, you know, and, and really, really thinking about what I wanted. Um, and of course, that's a hard question. And it's something where while you're in high school, it's, it's not something you can just be like, hmm, and sit down for five minutes. It's, it's just a multi-year thing. Um, but, but yeah, I think, I think for any high schoolers listening to this, like, especially if you're like a sophomore or something, or like even a junior, like take a chill pill, like you'll be okay. A- everyone will be okay. You'll end up where you're meant to be. I know this a little cliche, especially if you're, if you're a freshman, turn this off. Like, yeah. Yeah. Come back to this in like two years, bud. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you're a fe- like, go grab a juice box. No, I'm kidding. Um, oh God. <laughs> no, no, no. If you're, but, but if you're a freshman watching this, enjoy high school, you know, don't think about college right now. Keep it in the back of your head. It's a thing, but do not like the, the one thing that always riled me up and, 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 and I, I maybe if I'm going on a tangent here, please stop me. But um, the one thing that always riled me up was when I, someone would see someone join a club and it was always like NHS or student government. They're like, they're like, Oh, why are you joining? Why are you joining student government? They're like, Oh, it'll look awesome on college applications. And I'm like, no, it won't. If that's your reason, no, it won't. It, it will not. Like I didn't even put NHS on my map, on my application because I did shack in NHS. NHS. I, I joined it. I applied and got in. I had my little, uh, my, my stole at graduation, but uh, it's not a thing, you know, it's for me. And if you really did contribute to NHS, this isn't to, to crap on NHS. It's just the example I always see where so many people are like, I'm joining NHS because it looks great on college applications. I'm like, if you can't show that it meant something to you and you did something with this, it won't look as good as you think it will. It'll, it'll be cool, but like, you know, it, it will not be something where some of those are like, oh, they were in NHS and they, I don't know what they did with it. Harvard, like, no, it's, it's, it's not. So, so I think that's what always riled me up is when people did things for the explicit purpose of looking good. I'm like, if you're doing something for the explicit purpose of looking good and not because you want to do it you're not going to look good by doing it or as good at least it, same with like volunteer opportunities you know the, the people who would who would like go on mit, like a like international volunteering trips and I'd be like oh that's really cool why'd you do it and they're like well you know i wanted to help but also it, it's a real boost to my college application i'm like oh like like you should want to build houses in africa for for to help people not because it'll make you look good so and i think there's honestly even a little piece to the like building houses in africa where like people can go in with that mindset and that can shift the moment you're starting to build a house in africa too Oh, yeah, 100%. I'm with you with that idea. We recently switched up our student council in high school. It's now called Spirit Crew. And we switched it from just being like, you know, the elected positions. Like, what the heck does a student council treasurer do? Like, we got rid of elections. We got rid of titles. And we just called it Spirit Crew. We had, like, leaders initially because, like, this was the first year. And the teachers, like, we the teachers shifted to, like, two other teachers who were more, like, you know, just wanting to be involved and make it, like, a fun thing for high school. Especially after we've had two very strange, very, like, not high school years of, of of high school yeah and like they pulled some senior like pulled leaders from each grade like okay you're gonna kind of like front this thing and then they opened it up to everybody but it's called like and what we did was like the agenda was just make stuff fun and we've had the best homecoming i've ever had like i'm, I'm not trying to like toot my own horn here i'm just saying that like <laughs> this was the first homecoming where every grade like built a little parade float on a trailer and we got to go through town on our little parade never had happened before we had massive pep rallies one in october and then one like for winter olympics like three weeks ago and they were just lovely and it just made so much fun and energy into the school and like it you know i think that and everyone who was there wanted to do that because they wanted high school to be fun and they wanted this like seniors is particularly right i'm around most seniors because i am one we were in it because it's like we get to make this senior year fun and awesome and like it just creates such a cool experience same with i'm in an interact club like you know and that's a really it's like a mini rotary and you know it's so cool to be in it with people who want to just be in it to help people and to help our community and like yeah like i think that some of that stuff is hard too like it weeds out the people just going in for hours like oh yeah so yeah 
I, I, I want to know, like, I, I realized, like, I don't want to sound like I'm being, like, holier than thou. I'm totally guilty of all the things I'm saying are horrible. I, I, I don't want to sound like I'm like, oh, well, I was the special exception that, that did it. No, I, jo- I joined debate club because it would look good on a college application. I, I did. Um, I, I eventually fell in love with it, and I, you know, really loved it. But, um, and I, I eventually was president of the club. But we, we've done this. Like, we, we have definitely taken an opportunity because it would look really good on a college application or or at least that's been in the back of our head as like a benefit of like oh well this is gonna be great for college applications i'll be able to say i was in x you know so it's it's i, I want to point out that like even though we're talking about this and kind of lambasting these ideas we, we, we've both been there like we we are not we're not perfect souls we are not holier than thou you know so so don't and don't put yourself down if you thought that way it's not your fault it's it's the system. And I, I, you know, it's like Monty Python, like, oh, now you see the violence inherent in the system. But, um, but no, like, it's, it's a system that crushes students to the point where they, they have to think that way. Um, and, and that's, I think, the real evil of the college admissions process, not, not in the, the heavy, you know, stress that it puts on students necessarily of like achieving, but the fact that they, they transform it from, from, we want to see what you can do to like dance monkey dance, you know, you know, I, I guess my hope in that is like, even if it's whether you're joining for an application or, you know, doing stuff for giggles, I joined Vivable's founding members for the, for the meme, because we all said <laughs> in that discord on that AP Chem live stream that we're going to work at Fiveable. And I got the email and I said, okay, we're going to like, and I was like, I'm com- I committed to the bit and that changed my life. Like <laughs> I love that the bit. <laughs> fundamentally changed my life. And I did it because I committed to the bit or like I joined that interact club freshman year because I needed friends and Quizble, the same thing. And I just fell head over heels in love. And so the hope too is like, it is a bad system. And like, I wish people just join things because they want to, but eat my hope is like, even if you join something like that, like probably if you hate it that much, you're not going to stick around in it too, which, which is something too. Like it's mere exposure effect to pull an AP site. Like if yeah. you're in something long enough you're gonna kind of fall in love with it and i feel like that may be a cool thing too but it is a yeah jacked up for sure yeah if you if you if you feel yourself like if you feel in, not entitled what's the word uh like compulsed to be going to a club every week or you're like oh i have to go to math team or whatever um i, I love my school math team so if you're listening to this and you're at my school I, I love you guys i love math team using it as an example but mm-hmm. you know if you if you find yourself um you know in being like oh i gotta go to math team and, and you're like but it's great for college applications like don't don't do it because you're not gonna be able to convey the passion that schools actually want to see yeah um so so that's that's those are my two cents it's you know i'm not exactly like gandalf the wise or anything but um it's it's definitely just something to take into account when you're looking at what do you want to do through high school because i would much rather have i mean i i did enjoy high school but like i you know looking retrospectively you know if i had to choose between a high school where i looked like this like glowing student but also hated everything because i didn't want to be there or a student who maybe was comparatively less impressive but i was in a couple clubs that i loved i did find in my classes that i took i took electives i liked instead of 18 aps um i, I would pick the, the latter in a heartbeat and, and again this might be coming from the perspective that i'm already here so i don't have to think about it but it, just take it into account when you're thinking about this stuff because it's like at the end of the day high school and college is only eight years of your life and by the time you get out of it you're what 22 like you got your whole life and if you if you go up to someone after college you know and you're working and you're hanging out with someone it's like and you're like the, the clubs you were in in high school pretty much goes out the window the second you get to college and the clubs you were in in college kind of go out the window the second you get a job um in my view so yeah it's 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 a temporary thing so enjoy it yeah and like a couple of disclaimers first if you're a freshman listening to this here's my advice go to our backlog which are just more like advice heavy episodes that just talked about random high school stuff do that those are fun it's like a year it's a podcast from a year ago so have hold the biggest grain of salt in your hand that you can find and uh, go do that <laughs> or if you're listening to this and this is like a, a year back and there's like a year of content ahead of us there'll be more advice episodes that are just general q a's go listen to those and then when if you want to come back to college come back to this or just pull this advice because this is like full high school advice and the other thing is like club wise too like i, I don't want to say like don't do things do things that are fun in high school because they will also they look like again don't do this for the college resume but I feel like there's a level you can tell in colleges whether you really liked doing something. Like colleges oh, yeah. can tell what you loved and what you didn't love because of those supplementals. Because like I wrote about Interact for a couple supplementals because I freaking love that club. And like, and all the clubs that I do now, I love them and I adore them. And like, I really like hosting and like being a like a presence. Like I'll like MC pep rallies. I freak, I do it because I just really love it. And like, it looks good. Yeah, but like spend, if you, if there's a toss up between a club that you think will look better and a club that you will love, do the one that you will love and that passion honestly looks better than like semi-forced interest in a club that you think might look better like on a prestige right if it's between math club and quiz bowl and no hate to either of them and you hate math club and you love quiz bowl do quiz bowl and write about how you became quiz bowl varsity captain or or, or you don't have to do that but like and then when you're writing an essay write about how much you love quiz bowl because you like working as a team or you know whatever that meant to you but 
I'm trying to fit passion of clubs into the system that we can't change immediately. Is trying yeah. to how I'm doing this. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. I'm not trying to say like you know, but like do stuff because you love it, and that will honestly look better. You'll have a more fun time doing it, and it will probably look better in high school. Like yeah. I'm proud to say, all the clubs I think I've been in at this point, I loved because I was not super thinking about college up until this year. And what that happened is like you know, end of junior year, senior year, when I started to think about really and start writing essays, is I just I had a track record of all the things in high school I did that I loved, so I didn't have to like really make a lot of things up or like kind of pull stuff and be like, well, I did this. Like I liked everything I did in high school, so I could talk about interact that stuff for hours because I enjoyed it, and that I think helped me write stronger essays and have like stronger things on that application because I could just talk about the things that I love. Yeah, this is a shift. If you're a freshman and you're still here, this is for you. This is just going to be some more kind of fun, kind of lighter high school questions before we get out of here. Um, is there like a moment from high school, Dylan, that you just still think about that just like keeps coming back? Like that is just hmm. fun or for whatever reason, like a, a highlight maybe? Yeah. Um. Oh man, it's been so long since I've really thought about like high school memories. Um, I see it like a wise old sage, like I'm not a year out of high school. But um, man, I mean, I, there are a lot of great memories. You know, I think about I think about this time in AP world, we were learning about the Renaissance and um, my teacher is talking about humanism. This is like 2018. Um, so this is, so she, she, we're talking, she's talking about humanism and she's basically describing that as like, you know, focus on the individual and, um, and stuff of the Renaissance. And she was talking about how individuals want to start being noticed for, for their individuality. Um, and she compared it to, to the Tide Pod. A trend that was going on at the time. I think that was that was a highlight of at least, at least of that class. That was a very fun fun moment. Um, um, there were my 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 junior year. I remember the those first couple of weeks of COVID. Even though we were all inside our houses, I remember actually. I mean, I, I, this is coming from definitely a privilege a privilege you set, but like it was it was a good couple of weeks. I think for me, honestly, it was. I I I spent a lot more time talking to my online friends. I made a lot more friends. Um. So so th- those like few months in high school, oddly enough, are kind of some that I'll I'll weirdly treasure. You know, um, um, some people that I still now consider my closest friends in the world, I met during that time, um, you know, uh, specifically five people, people that I'm now really close friends with. Um, you know, I, I became more self-sufficient as a learner. I uh, actually, weirdly enough, again, became closer with my teachers, some of my teachers, um, by talking to them through like re- uh, Remind, which is like, you know, the texting app. Um, yeah, no, it's, 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 that, that's a good one. Um, i trying to think of a specific memory. Um, there was, so my school, my high school did this thing called battle of the classes, which I know is not like a, our thing specifically, but like basically throughout the year, we would have, uh, each class would collect points for stuff for like spirit days, whatever. At the end of the year, we'd have basically field day where there would be like competitions and sports and you could win uh, points for your class. Last year, we, we obviously couldn't have one because COVID. And so we did it virtually. Um, what that meant though, was so for the first part of the day, I hung out and hosted the, the Jeopardy game, um, that I had also written the questions for. So it was a very fun time there, but then we we ditched school at like 10 a.m. Uh, me and two of my friends and went to this diner and just like spent the day at the beach and it was that was a really good day even though it wasn't like a day of school it was it was it was a day of school so um that was that was a good one a lot of really great memories um yeah that's fun that's lovely that is really really cool I have my Alex Trebek right here this is yeah so my other po- positivity podcast is the other good news show I'm on that's like a Jeopardy stand cast uh Good News Podcast first, Jeopardy Sandcast second. I guess this is High School Advice Podcast first, Jeopardy Sandcast second. That's just going to, like, I'm like, that's just going to continue as a running theme. So um, last question before we kind of get out of here. Is there any, like, one song that either, like, got you through a moment of high school or you put on, like, a high school survival playlist or a college survival playlist? Like, just, like, any song that really, I think, resonates with you and, like, you associate with, like, a period of school or anything in that world? So so I have two answers to this. Um, my, My first for me personally was Scenes from an Italian Restaurant by Billy Joel. My favorite song of all time. I have analyzed that song beyond belief. I've dug into that song. Billy Joel in general. I've I've been driving down the highway with just him on, just belting his lyrics. Love him. Billy Joel, if you're listening to this, hi. <laughs> no, but um, the, the one piece of advice that I actually got from someone who's a senior at Northeastern who, who's kind of like was a mentor of mine last semester and, and a little bit this semester, um, have a song that you can turn in papers at like 2 a.m. with. Like I'm talking like an intense, like I need a hero sort of like, you know, something where you could like click that submit button and be like, I need a hero. <laughs> just like celebrating, you know, amp you up. Some some good amp music is, is great. Um, but I mean, I, I think if you're looking for songs for me, it was all classic rock. Billy Joel, Bruce Springsteen. I come from Jersey. So Bruce Springsteen, Bon Jovi, um, you know, who am I thinking? Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, The Beatles, all, all of those. I, I've just named a couple, but like all those. And, and I listen to a lot of funk, actually. A lot of like 
heavy bass, no lyric funk was some of my best like focus music. Like Power by Marcus Miller is one of my favorites. Um, there's a there's a Spotify like pre-made playlist called like it's called like Deep Tones or something. Um, I, I play the bass, so it's kind of like a thing, but it's I just I love those kind of like cool, like smooth and smooth vibes. So so yeah, those those are my my picks. Except that is always great picks. I'm hoping to build like a little mini like playlist from all these all everyone's song <laughs> picks. Like that's gonna be, I think, a universal question. I'm gonna try and build the, the student nice. council playlist with. But <laughs> that kind of brings us to the end. Thank you so much for, for being on, Dylan. Is there anything you want to plug, whether it's your social media, any anything in the world, really? Um, all right. So this MLM I'm part of. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> everyone, oh, dear. Buy, buy this workout pill. <laughs> oh, no. 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 Um, no, I mean, no real plugs. Um, you know, if, if you want to, you can share my, my socials in the, uh, in the description of this. So if anyone wants to reach out that way, I'm, I'm totally happy to talk, um, about, about any of the stuff I've talked about here, or if you need help to talk about Northeastern, I love talking about this place. So, um, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. It's been a, it's been a pleasure. It's been an absolute bless. Thank you. Yeah. If you want to find us, uh, our Instagram is student council pod. Um, we'll have, I think, posts and pictures of some, some great hockey games and just some other fun, fun photos. We'll link Amanda's video in the description as well if you have any questions or topics or colleges that you want to hear about you can email us at studentcouncilpodcast at gmail.com wishing you good luck and good times in all of your endeavors council is adjourned